Hey everybody, greetings. Welcome to Tokyo. In this episode, I'll be talking about why Japan is banning tourists in Kyoto. What's going on in Gion? Save the geisha. What is all this about? There's a lot of discussion right now about this. It's actually an old story. They decided this about two, two and a half weeks ago, but actually, I think it was in 2019, before the pandemic, the tourism situation in Japan, there were just so many tourists in Kyoto, foreign tourists in particular, they put these signs in place, so it made a lot of news back then, and over, the, over those uh, three, four years, we sort of forgot about it, but now tourism has come back with a vengeance, and they're gonna be breaking all sorts of numbers in 2024 with tourism, and the signs have come back they had a, a few years of really good peace and quiet, and that's the way Kyoto likes it. And now it's back. And I, I want to show you, because this is very uh, relevant to a lot of tourists here. I mean, this is on NHK, uh, uh, the Twitter just recently. You can see that what the signs look like. They, they have them putting them in place. Reporters are going over there. The Japanese are kind of surprised by this as well, trying to wrap their head around it. This is a decision not by the national government, but it's definitely from Kyoto, the local, and you know, they're called Shido, these are uh, private roads, and they have a complete right to do this. Um, they're closing it down. I believe it's not just banned, I don't think you can go in there. And if you do, I think they, they fine you 10,000 yen, which is approximately, what, $65? But still, you don't want the hassle of it, because you're probably waste a day um, at the police station or being fined, I, I don't know exactly what uh, is, is going on with that, but what happens if you do get fined i haven't heard anybody who does but if you do that makes means you're probably not a really good person and i'm going to show you why so the japanese news has been all over this oh look vending machines you know the last time i came to ginza i was looking for this let's sneak in here and i want to show it to you after i give you a little bit more information on this again this is a warranted there's a lot of them i was looking for this before um you know a walk around ginza all right, so while, while I'm looking at the vending machines, I wanna, I wanna talk about this. This is, I'm gonna play it window in window here. This is a news report uh, from TV Asahi, I believe. And just look at all the foreign tourists. These aren't tourists. These are uh, foreign tourists posing for photos. This is the alley in question. There's a map they're gonna be showing you in a minute. Uh, it's really narrow. This is where the geisha prepare. These are, these are the houses where the maiko uh, get ready for jobs and they, they prepare and train and live in down in this alley with inside the houses there and there's all these tourists in here it depends on the time of the day now with the sign you can see it's quite cleared out there's a sign the very famous one right at the start of it uh, and here's some foreign tourists eating and walking which is sort of a no-no a lot of tourist tour groups are going through there a lot of them were Japanese run tour groups you can see Tourists, tourists, tourists. Nothing wrong with that. But um, the images at the TV network, here, here are the streets that are closed down now. They're basically the alleys around Guillon. Here, in particular, the, the road right there, the small alley. This is where it, there's been a massive amount of problems. And everybody wants to get a photo for Instagram. I get that. Now, here comes, here comes um, some of the images that kind of disturb me. You don't realize how bad the problem is until you see the tourists react when they see a Michael, all right? When the Michael comes out, it is worse than paparazzi. And then the tourists give this, this coy little smile or the, these smiles like, oh, thank you for allowing me to take your picture. But you didn't really ask permission. You kind of just went ahead and, and put the person who's, who's uh, hard at work in a weird, awkward position. And they don't feel very comfortable about it too. Look at the cones that they have there. All right, here it is. There's a Michael going to work, a real Michael. Um, at sunset, you can see the lights are on. Here's the tourist he's taking the picture here. He's like, oh, like it looks innocent enough, but when hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of people start to do it, it's really annoying. It shows it does, the design of the sign is really classy, <laughs> of course, because it's Kyoto, and the fine uh, that you're going to get of Ichima yen. And some, the news report goes over and shows some of the uh, reaction of the locals. A lot of them are, are in favor of it. Some of them don't quite understand. and. Uh, and there's a Michael that's going to work through the going down the alley. Once they enter into the public streets, maybe it's okay. But blocking their path is very rude. Saya, you're absolutely right. I, I wanted you to see those images to give you an idea of what the problem is really like. How bad do you think that is? Do you think? I, how would you feel if if you're going to work 
and you're just different, right? And everyone's snapping your picture, but they're doing it because you're too beautiful, right? And in that case, it's sort of, um, I don't know. Like, I think maybe the city, and this is where we're gonna throw out some ideas, maybe the city should hire some fake Michael, like people from the tourism office and walk around as fake Michael to give the city an image maybe, you know? That's what the tourists want. They just want to get a picture of somebody with a white makeup face walking around Kyoto. You know how I know that? Because I met some uh, tourists from Taiwan, beautiful, dressed up as geisha, walking around Kyoto, in particular the, um, uh, near Kiyomizu Dera, where all the tourists are. They spent a lot of money to prepare like this to get their photos, and they decided to walk around the town. This is, I got, me and Kevin were, this was like years ago. And uh, when I talked to them, you'd see all the Western tourists don't know that they're not Japanese. You could tell because the way that their kimonos were too short and they weren't expensive kimonos. You could tell they weren't real Michael. But the Taiwanese tourists were very polite and allowed everybody to take pictures of them, not realizing that, no, they're not even Japanese. They just look like Michael, I guess. But maybe that's how good the makeup was. So me and Kevin were kind of laughing at, ah, tourists. You know, on, the tourists are walking around cosplaying a geisha and the tourists are taking pictures of them thinking that they're geisha. There's nothing wrong with that and maybe that's what the city should recognize. That's what the tourists want. So give them what they want. Go down, um, you know, the Higashiyama with, uh, hire two or three geisha, pay them a lot of money, or pay, I hope you pay them well, and just let them be their pictures taken uh, walking around like they're going to work and faking it and and uh, you're gonna make a lot of tourists really happy and it probably boosts the image of, Ki of Kyoto I don't know but this is not this is um, a reaction we, you, we wouldn't have this band now why we wouldn't have this band if it wasn't for tourists being I don't know another level unruly and I think it's gotten worse with smartphones yeah, tourists have always been coming to Japan. In 2013, 2014, yeah, people had smartphones, but it wasn't as bad. It started to get bad around 2017 and 2018. They tolerated it, and then they just had to ban it. But it's not just that. You know, since Japan reopened in 2022, we, we all know what happened with uh, some of the, the kick streamers and, and the other vloggers, uh, IRL people. It, it really was something that, that disturbed. Japanese society and made a lot of people feel very uncomfortable and now when you go into places uh, in particular where they've encountered uh, people streaming where they didn't have permission for example like I'm off of the road I'm being very polite I'm not trying to bother anybody maybe if somebody asks me I might you know, I'll probably stop the live stream it's something that you know you want to be very respectful about it um, the streets of Japan are different. It's not public everywhere. Let, let's just say the, the, the way that the, the law, I believe, is that if anybody does, it, nobody wants their picture published, you have to take it down. And you can't, in particular, you can't focus in. Now, you can take shots of the public, like panning and stuff, but if someone ever asks you to take it down, it's polite to do so. All right, that's not illegal to show like a wide and you have a picture of and somebody is in the background. It's when you zoom in on somebody's face and you make them, this is the law, you make them the focus of it and then you publish that. That is very much against the law and that is very much what is happening with the geisha. They're being published on social media. They're being published in magazines. They're not getting credit for it. And I know how they feel because I've had my content taken and put up on the internet and, and if you go on Instagram you'll see reels of the 420 kilogram fireworks shell or um, you know how how um, I don't know I got a ton of videos that went super the, the highway through a building there's there's tons of super viral scenes that I've done that uh, ended up being um, taken and cut into reels and shorts and other videos that became monetized and I, there's not much I can do about it just like I heard a lot of people about the last video I uploaded, uh, this one, I got a lot of response from artists and I completely understood them. They, they were quite upset that I used any AI images, although I, I'm pretty sure I, I didn't steal anything and most of the images I, I fixed in Photoshop because AI really stinks. But I can understand how artists felt when they 
saw AI images because they feel threatened, some of them, uh, with their jobs. And you know, my responses were, were very polite in response. And I said, I think, don't think that really applies here. It's a historical video. Um, go check it out, by the way. It's, it's a really good video. If you're watching the Shogun drama right now, which is quite popular, this is the end of the era of feudalism. Right? It's, it started in the 1600s, uh, uh, 1603, with Tokugawa Ieyasu. And then uh, that's where Shogun starts. That's when William Adams. And then uh, this is Manjiro era at the end of it, when they end the um, uh, Shogunate and they start with the Meiji Restoration. This is this episode. So I, I think you're going to want to see this because it kind of connects between the, the sides and, and the, the way that Japan opens. When William Adams came, Japan was closing. And when, William, and when Manjiro came back to Japan, Japan was opening. And it's a really an interesting contrast I think you're going to find between the two episodes. I, I have to do a better job of publish, uh, publicizing this uh, episode and, and doing it just before Perry's Black Ship. That's right. Uh, Manjiro had to sneak into Japan through Ryukyu, which was Okinawa. Okinawa was aligned with the Satsuma clan in Kagoshima, but it wasn't actually a part of Japan until closer to the, uh, to the uh, end of the 19th century, the 20th century, then Okinawa joined Japan, um, and Japan was a united country uh, under the Meiji government. But that was, uh, <laughs> that's, that, this is, it was interesting history. The Ada Museum, I believe, is still closed. I, I don't, I'm not sure when it's going to open, but I'm really excited to go back in there. Thanks for asking about that, by the way. The, um, and, and UFO Bob, thank you for watching that. I appreciate it. I do, thank you. The, um, uh, I, there's not a lot I want to talk about with this Kyoto banning, but we're going to see a reaction when tourism... I want you, when you do come here to Japan, and this isn't a problem with people who watch uh, streams about Japan, and nobody on this series, this isn't a problem if you're watching this series because we have probably the most polite, and I could tell because people who come up and say hi to me are usually the most polite, kind, uh, wanting to do the right thing souls. They're great. So I know it's not an issue with the people who's watching right now. But when you do see people that are being a little bit unruly, doing something maybe that's wrong, maybe you can say comment. It's not so much about minding your own business. The reason why you should do that is because it impacts all of us, right? When you see somebody doing something that's bad, it impacts all of us because Japan will react by taking away privileges. My biggest fear is that tourists are, they're going to ban alcohol on the streets because tourists take advantage of it, it's in particular um, Americans, because they're not allowed to drink outside. You know, it's a privacy thing. It's a, a, a public uh, space. You can't dr drink alcohol in a public space. And the reason why is because of, just look at the laws. Like in the early 20th century, before prohibition, people would, wouldn't drink water. They would drink alcohol. So Americans were drunk all the time. This is from history. This Ken Burns, go check it out. <laughs> it was, they would drink alcohol more than water. So men in particular were drunk. Domestic violence was sky high. People were drinking. You'd go into places and they wouldn't have water. They would have casks of whiskey out there. So that was why the prohibition was, was uh, you know, put into place because there's just so much crime and so many other problems, health problems with, with alcohol. Now we have the same thing kind of, we're seeing tourists congregating in front of convenience stores in central Tokyo and Kyoto drinking. It's good, you could save some money, but it also, there's gonna be a reaction to this because you're leaving it a, a disaster zone. You're getting drunk, you're, you're smoking, you're drinking right in front when you're not supposed to be doing that. And this is probably the next thing to go. You heard it here first, <laughs> sadly. I love, I, I love to be able to picnic underneath a cherry blossom tree and have uh, one, I don't drink very much at all. I have maybe one drink a week now. I don't know, just because I'm getting older. But, you know, back 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I would have, you know, a few beers with friends underneath the Sakura trees, and I could see if people are going to abuse it in particular in Tokyo, they're going to just ban alcohol in public spaces next if we don't wise up. And I say we because I'm locked. I'm All the other YouTubers that that don't look Japanese, they don't watch our shows. They don't know that we're, we're residents of Japan. We get locked, lopped in with everybody else here. So we lose, you, you guys, I'm, by you guys, I'm, I'm saying 
the bad international tourist, tourists, and you're not watching here, so I shouldn't say that. Those guys that come here and make trouble are the ones that are creating problems for us guys, the residents of Japan who've been living here for a long time. And it's up to us to kind of notify you and maybe even stop it. And stars here, hope you're having a good day. It's cold, it's chilly, it's raining a little bit, but I'm doing pretty good. My cold is gone. I was sick for about a week um, after the stream at the, uh, when was it? Uh, in Toyosu. I wasn't feeling that hot that day, but uh, I'm a lot better now. Thank you. Thanks for being a big. Uh, thanks for being a big reason for going to Japan. I'm going in October. Awesome, and I love that time of year. You're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, it's you'll be able to see some of the leaves changing up in Tohoku, but you're gonna be a little bit too early for Tokyo, unless you're coming at the very end, and then there's some leaves changing. But it's a, it's maybe the most beautiful time of the year besides the cherry blossoms. And WRX WRX Turbo is in the house. I love saying that. It's been a long time. Welcome back. Um, yeah, I, I, my nose might be a little bit st still stuffed up, but I feel like uh, very lively. Uh, I have to do a narration for the Shinjuku video. I have to wait maybe until tomorrow or Monday morning to do it because I, you can tell if I, when I narrate and I have a cold, it doesn't sound, uh, <laughs> it sounds like I have a cold. Especially if it's a video that people are going to be watching for the next 20 years or something. Uh, you don't want to, you want to put your best foot forward if that's even possible. Andy's Texas writes in here, I joined my cocktail hour uh a right act like you're I'm, I, I'm trying to read that it went by too fast yes i you know the next video is going to be in shinjuku and this is the place where you can take pictures all day long all right i love that place it's mostly focused in kabukicho and i have to be honest i'm a little bit worried at night about walking around kabukicho it might be the most suspect place in in Tokyo. If you ask where's the most dangerous place in Tokyo, I would probably say Kabukicho, even though over the last um, over the last uh, a few years they've really cleaned it up. There's so many new buildings there. Uh, it's a beautiful, re the renovations have been beautiful. It still feels a little seedy, in particular like Gochome and a little bit out there. But the area around uh, Higashi Shinjuku Station and Shinjuku Station are pretty nice now. Um, so I, I went around with uh, Magical Trips and uh, I worked with them before on the Hiroshima video and a Kyoto night video. So we did one more. This is going to be on a Shinjuku night video. It was so much fun. I got to meet with a guide. I, I, it's, it's a sponsored video and it'll be marked as such. All right, It's a promotional video. Uh, but I talk about the history of Shinjuku and what makes it such a foodie place and why the eclectic mix of foods and uh, uh, how it became so popular. There's so many things mixed in there, as well as uh, some advice for traveling there. But I, you know, I, I think that I, I don't have to take the tours because I live here in Japan. But when I got a chance to do that with them, it was just fun because, first of all, I used to have a lot of Japanese friends, but then I got married and then they got married and then a lot of them moved away. And then it's hard to make new friends after you get married. Um, you have your wife's friends, but I don't see them that often. So it was kind of cool because Sho was a really, he spoke English, he was a really good guy, he was my guide. Uh, he, he was young so he kind of looked like, I don't know, he kind of looked like he could have worked at one of those uh, hostess clubs for women. And he knew the area really well. Uh, a handsome guy, uh, smart, knew a lot. He was young, um, he knew more, he knew, he knew more than me about Shinjuku but I could, I could still teach him a few things which is pretty fun. I don't, I don't know if I want to show that in the video yet, but uh, we drink sake, we go to a yakiniku place and eat some wagyu in, in Shinjuku, and then we go out to a sushi place, and then we have some uh, uh, food there. So it's a really interesting uh, uh, edited episode that'll be coming next week for sure. Um, maybe on like around Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. It depends on when they want to release it because uh, I'm, I'm making this for them. And uh, you know, I love the magical trip people. They're so much fun to, to work with. I can never not get lost in Shinjuku. I know! Tortorofuku it is, it, it is the biggest, it's the m busiest station in the world with 3.5 million passengers per day. It's just crazy. It dwarfs all the other stations in Tokyo it's because of all the connections that it has. It has Otaku, it has Keio, it has JR, it has Metro, it has Oedo Line, it has, uh, it has uh, uh, the toy, 
the subway line. It's, it's just a mess of exits. There's A exits, B exits, C exits, X exits, I think. And it goes on forever. I'm just gonna walk. I'm gonna, let me show you the main street in Ginza then. Ginza is another place with a lot of really cool alleys. Why don't, why don't we walk and see if we can find some? I'm actually here for a reason. Tomorrow I'll be in, hey, hey guys, if you want to come, I guess you could. Tomorrow I'll be at uh, All Birds in Maronouchi, and I have to uh, dye indigo, dye, Japanese indigo dye my shoes, <laughs> which is going to be pretty cool. I tried to dirty them up, which is really hard to do, because, uh, you know, white shoes are hard to, I don't know, you don't want to get them dirty, so you try to avoid it. But tomorrow I get to dye them blue with an indigo master and we're going to talk a little bit about the art of dyeing and uh, you know, the importance of indigo. And I have some videos that I took in Tokushima when I was there dyeing indigo. And it's, uh, that's one of the reasons why there's like a samurai blue and why Japan has blue uniforms for the soccer team. I guess you, you all know like Japan's colors is red and white, but there's, it's also blue. And I think it's the indigo blue because of Japan's history of, of indigo dyeing, and uh, it also has a very strong history of debt. Oh, there's some, another vending machine uh, bank over there. Oh, I see Katayama's in the house. Katayama, thank you. I have to say, uh, personally, for a lot of the feedback on the last video, there's a lot of things I didn't know about that you always guide me with, and I'm so appreciative of that, of that so I can make better episodes next time. Each one gets better and better. I think the last episode might have been the, the, the best storytelling, maybe. Even though it's historical in nature, I, I think it'll be, uh, it'll grow over time. I did listen to some of the feedback and I changed the thumbnail from color to black and white. That is not an AI generated image of Manjiro, by the way. It is a, uh, a um, cleaned up version of a photo that is old that I also colorized that took a long time to do kind of bringing history to life, but sometimes doing that makes it seem a little un inauthentic. And uh, I want to thank the feedback that I got from so many viewers. That's what's great about YouTube. I said this yesterday, but I said this yesterday, but if you, um, YouTube is a social media and there's some YouTubers that get angry. I think I want to go down this way. Oh no, here it is. I can go in this way. There's some YouTubers that get angry at the comments. They call them the, like the, the trolling. I actually love the feedback. I love the criticism. I love the honesty. I love the direct honesty. I think the older you get, the more you appreciate people that are uh, you know, s s speaking truth to you. And you listen to that feedback. You collect it all and then you do better because nobody is perfect. I'm far from perfect. But every time I do something, I learn from it and I get better at it. And that's really helpful. This is, right, everybody who says there's no convenience stores in Ginza, there's one right in this alley. And this is one of the most unique ones. I guess if there's a signal, I can take you in here just for a second. This is a Yamazaki daily store and they sell cheap bentos. And it's, it's like a hideaway because Ginza is a very expensive neighborhood. You can get like a 500 yen bento from here. The entrance of this convenience store is hidden in the alley. Look, that's the entrance. There's only locals would know to, to check back here. That's crazy, right? That's the entrance to the convenience. That's crazy. And hello, hi, you two one. You're right. Criticism isn't always true. <laughs> you have to you have to read between the lines sometimes but for longtime viewers you're gonna like the AI art or you're gonna you're not gonna like it there's not a lot of it somebody said heavy use I disagree with heavy use a lot of them were just photos all right like they were real photos I'm, I'm going into here the Mujirushi actually um, but when you're, when you're making content for YouTube, you, you, you have to, you, you know, you have an audience. And when your audience doesn't watch the episodes that you put up there, they're not gonna be suggested to new people. And with this episode, I didn't 
I didn't listen to the audience enough that they wanted to click on the story or I didn't sell it enough. So it's not going to be suggested on YouTube. I think it has 100,000 impressions, which is ridiculously low. Um, you want about 3 million to get, you know, like 200,000 views or something, depending if you've got a 5% click through rate, which is ideal. I don't know. I know a lot about how to make videos do well, but this one is very niche, maybe. I think it's a good story, though. Definitely check it out and let me know what your, what your feedback is, because a lot of people certainly did. Check it out. Yeah, to get back to it, thanks, Michael, for bringing that up again. To get back to the, the focus of this, uh, Kyoto banning tourists, it isn't true. I think that the, some of the headlines are a little bit deceptive here. Um, just a couple of alleys are banning it. You know, I, I can bring up this story again. I'll put it in the side here while, while I'm talking about it. it it's, um, there, there's some areas where the geisha are just harassed too much and they can't do what they want to do. Well, you can see that, wow, there's going to be a new building. I wonder if they dig in the ground here, if they find stuff from World War II or something like that. I'm sure. It could be a little, seem a little bit dangerous <laughs> to dig in the grounds in Tokyo. I don't know. We're going back to like the reconstruction of the 1950s. If you, the further down you dig, I think. But you can see here the uh, tourists sometimes go a little bit gung ho. They go a little bit too crazy about needing, wanting to take pictures of the geisha when they see them, and they're just doing their job. They're just trying to go to work, and it's, it's just too much. They're the alleys that are closed down to tourists, and if you go in there, I think it's, it's best just not to go in there. They're private roads anyways, and Kyoto still has these old private roads where you can't, you can't, um, uh, if they close them, you can't go down them. There's certain private roads like that in Japan, old ones in particular in Kyoto, have these old grandfathered in laws that allow them to do that. So I think it's good for them, you know? I don't think you can stop the tourists from wanting to take a picture like this unless you did what I just said that, said that they should probably do, which is hire a couple of people to walk up and down, in particular at sunset and sunrise, Maybe not sunrise. At sunset, when tourists want to take these pictures of the geisha coming out, mislead them and put a sign like, we have Maiko walking up and down in Higashiyama or places where the tourists can get scenic pictures together with them. That, that Everybody wants to get a picture with them, but that's not the right way to do it. There's a picture of the sign. 10,000 yen fine, Michael. If you do, get caught. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback, everybody. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It is chilly today. Uh, I, I'm still shocked the cherry blossoms are not out at all in Tokyo. I don't see any of them. In fact, you can see the trees here in Ginza don't have any blossoms, flowers, or buds on them. It's bizarre, but it's because it feels like winter. My, my fingers hurt from the cold, actually. So I'm gonna see what, what's going on to, on Sunday, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Dean and I will be doing a live stream in Yurakucho, all birds. I'll be dyeing my white shoes indigo and then uh, talking a little bit about Japan's history of indigo, which should be pretty interesting. Uh, with a, I believe there's an indigo dye master coming from uh, Shikoku or Okayama. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, get some, we'll talk with him about this as well. And then on Monday and next, next week, I'll be doing a, as much as I can with cherry blossoms and talking about all sorts of things. Uh, in particular with springtime, where are the best places to go in Japan, uh, some of the things that you definitely should be considering with spring travel in Japan, um, when, does it, when is the ski season stuff, like there's a bunch of questions that you did. And if you're on, if you're on um, Patreon, um, there's a phone number, a US phone number that you can call to leave me a message. We've gotten about three or four messages, not too many, but you can leave me a message and I get it on the Discord server, the notification, and I can download your message and then play it in the live stream. So it's gonna be a, a, a cool way to be able to uh, uh, interact with all of you. Uh, big shout out to Peso for setting this up. I haven't promoted it very well, um, but I'll, I'll, 
after we test it with our Patreon supporters, I'll eventually give it to the public. But, uh, you know, like things can go wrong, so we better beta test this <laughs> with the public, right? With our, our, uh, with our uh, group at, in, on Patreon. Visit a knife store, that's a great, great idea, Ronald. I haven't done a knife episode in a while. Um, I, I think one of the YouTube, oh, one of the YouTubers that came here. So I get contacted by a lot of YouTubers that are coming to Japan, big ones that are doing episodes documentary style because they see the work that I've done in the past. They contact me almost always through Instagram. Awesome people. Um, uh, yes Theory has, has responded, uh, has written me and uh, um, uh, Drew Binsky also who, who's come here and, and I never get a chance to catch up with him. Him and his wife were here. Um, there's a bunch of YouTubers and I love meeting people from outside of Japan and getting a chance to talk and meet with them and hear their stories and their impressions of Japan because it gives me a new light, a light on the country that I live in which is awesome. Uh, so uh, there's uh, recently a YouTuber who posted a video on making a sword from scratch and uh, I think I gave my two cents to help them out and didn't get a chance to see them when they were here. Big, produc big productions. Uh, you know, I've been to every, every part of this country, so I know a lot to, to help people out when they do come here, and I love doing that. I think Mike Chen was here recently again, and uh, yeah, it always makes me happy to, to hear he's in the, around eating and having fun. Also, a really good guy. All right, everybody, stay warm, because I'm a little chilly right now. It's Ginza on a rainy day, but it was good to talk about Kyoto. And not to worry, this ban is not really going to impact you at all. Again, I've told you over and over again, Kyoto is not the everything Japan. It is a cultural heart of Japan. Well, you know what? I would say it's, it's, Japan has several cultural hearts. Kyoto is just maybe the biggest. That doesn't make it the best. It's not the all of Japan. That's not where Japan culture is all in there. But it's a really nice place to go. But I would not plan for more than, I would just do like day trips. You know, I would go there, spend one night, and then go to Kanazawa or go someplace else where you feel a little bit more free space. And then it's just, it's a city. Kyoto is just a city. You want to feel something like Takayama is more like the countryside where you can feel the, the, the if you want to feel the core of Japan, you want to feel Japanese culture, you don't go, you, you go to a ryokan in the countryside and you feel, the, that family spirit and you see the service, that's something that you never forget. And you eat the food of the, of the local area and you soak in an onsen bath. And to me that is, and dress up in a yukata, which is what you're supposed to do. And that's when you really feel like you are in Japan. And that's what the Japanese do as well when they want to stay in a tatami room, for example. Anyways, I'll see you all in our next live stream tomorrow from Yurakucho, just across the street with Dean, my buddy, Matane. Don Quixote is not the soul of Japan. That's a place where it's like a death trap. Death, dra death trap. Should an earthquake ever hit, that's the last place you want to be. Don Quixote. Crazy. Crazy. I like that comment though. <laughs>